Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Tech with Ray here. I know it's been a long time, but I'm back now and I can't wait for you guys to see what I have stored. So to begin today, I wanted to show you guys how to build your very own custom water cooled PC. And I am going to try my best to try to explain every single detail that I wish somebody explained to me. So this will actually be the second time I'm building a water cooled PC. But honestly, after building that first one, I feel like going forward, everything makes so much more sense. And that was kind of the case. So what you're seeing now is just me removing the parts of my first build, uh, just because there were a couple of things that I wish I had changed for my first build. So that is kind of why I initially did this. And on top of that, I was like, this would make for great content. So on my first build, I had so many questions and luckily Reddit was there for most of my concerns after looking for solutions on YouTube. Most of my concerns had to do with how the flow worked, where do I connect the fittings? How do I connect the fittings? Does the order matter, et cetera, and et cetera. So hopefully I can answer all those questions I was very much looking for. I'm going to assume you are here after having built your own custom PC, but nevertheless, I will show you in step by step how everything kind of worked. So after removing the old CPU water block, I cleaned the CPU block and installed the new one. Honestly, there has to be an easier way to install that CPU. It was very tricky. As you guys can see, I had to have the motherboard sideways in order to fit those screws into the back plate fittings. But after having done that, that was smooth sailing. I then had to prep the case and removed all of the things I wasn't going to use, such as the hard drive bay, which uh, after looking at this video and, you know, real realizing how much space I actually need. I'm probably going to need to reinstall that. So I suggest for you guys to do your cable management with that hard drive bay. Also, this case came with the pre-installed vertical GPU holder. So I had to remove that. Honestly, though, I kind of wish I installed the GPU vertically just because the sag on this 3090 is just not for me. Maybe when I decide to upgrade to the new 40 series, I can do that. But for now, we're just going to stick with this. So after cleaning the case, I screwed the motherboard into place. This took me longer than I want to admit as I was using the wrong screws. So now one of the main reasons I decided to change the build was because the GPU was too too wide once I installed the active backplate water block and it didn't allow the case covering to close. I had the Leon Lee O11D. So if you want to have this specific configuration, I highly recommend making sure it fits. So before I continue the, with the installation, I wanted to make sure it fit. And luckily it just barely did. And just for reference, this is the RTX 3090 Strix with both EK blocks. So once the GPU was installed, I had to figure out how to install the reservoir water pump combo. Unfortunately, this wasn't as easy as I had hoped. So I ended up needing to cut a little part of the case off in order to make that pump fit through. All I had was a drill and that was enough to cut just a little metal part off. After that, the installation was very smooth. I then installed the rad with the fans on top of the case and I had to move it a little closer to the front of the case in order for the routes I had in mind work. This was also one of the biggest reasons for creating this build. The old pump I had was just too loud and I couldn't control the flow rate. So here's my first tip. Make sure to get an EK reservoir water pump combo and make sure it is D5. I will have the full list of parts in the description down below. With this pump, after connecting it to the water pump connector on the motherboard, I was able to control the flow and it is night and day difference when it comes to noise. After installing the pump and the first rad, I installed the second rad. And now for my second tip, install all the components that will be a part of the loop first then think about making the loop work with what you have installed and if rotating a rat for example and having the fittings be on the other side will make the loop easier then do that i spent a lot of time thinking about the loop before even having the components installed which caused me to go a little crazy but after a while i had a rough idea of how the loop was going to flow and just install the rads. After that, I pulled out all the fittings I had from the last build and just started installing them on all of the openings. This gave me more insight as to what kind of bends I had to do. And if I could help myself not have to bend that many tubes, I would. Honestly, you will spend a good amount of money on fittings, but make sure if you're going to order them online to order more than you think you will need and just return the ones you don't. Luckily, I have a micro center about 30 minutes away from me, so 
so that saved me a lot of time. So now for some things I wish were explained to me before building my first water cooled system. The loop begins with the pump outlet opening. In order to find this, you will have to look at the instruction manual of whatever pump or reservoir pump combo you decide to get. Once you identify that, that will be where the water will go through for the first time. And just like it has an outlet, you will need the loop to go through all of the parts and end up in the inlet of the pump. If you plan on using this reservoir pump combo, it will make your life really easy as everything is explained on the manual and you can use this video as reference as well. Also, another crucial thing to install is the drain. This will go on the lowest part of your loop, but luckily this res water pump combo has a dedicated opening for that, as you can see. Another thing to keep in mind is that the order of the flow does not matter. What I mean by this is that you don't have to go from pump to rad to GPU to rad to CPU and back to pump. So like the water technically gets cooled off through the rads, but it doesn't mean that you have to go from rad to hot to rad to another thing that's hot. So you can do what I did where I did GPU, then CPU, then a rad, then another rad. It has been proven that the order does not matter as the water will always be a specific temperature throughout the system. So it doesn't have to go from a radiator to a CPU and then cooled off the water from the CPU in the radiator and then go to another hot thing. So don't worry about that. All you have to do is make sure you go from the pump outlet and end in the pump inlet. Getting the right fittings, like I've said, will make your life a lot easier as it will allow you to not make that many bends. Finally, make sure that when you insert the tube into the fitting to make sure it really is in there. I made that mistake during my first build to just insert the tube to where the o-rings were at and when i ran the loop for the first time it exploded it ruined my motherboard so make sure to really push those tubes into the fittings i am not sure if the ek fittings are easier than these that is one thing i wish i could also upgrade but unfortunately i have already spent a lot of money on these fittings so i'm gonna stick with these so like i've mentioned my loop i wanted to go from pump to gpu to cpu to this this radiator and then finish with the last radiator and back to the pump. I'd had a couple of concerns with the GPU and the CPU loop as it wasn't going to be a straight tube uh, connecting it, but I managed to place the fittings appropriately so that I would make it straight. Once you have everything installed and identify your loop, now it's time to cut and bend. Now sit back and enjoy this process of watching me bend yeah. and test. This part roughly took me around two hours. So also another thing to keep in mind are the tubes you will use. Obviously, we are doing a hardline loop, so we will need a heat gun to be able to bend these tubes. But there are actually two types of tubes, which I didn't really know. So the first tube is called PETG, and this is like just some sort of hard plastic, which is a lot easier than the other one called acrylic. So PETG is really easy to bend as it requires less heat to make it bend. The only downside is that it won't be as clear as the acrylic one. It also doesn't require a saw to cut it. You can use a PETG tube cutter and it will definitely make this process a lot less messy, but I wanted to get the best one, so I went with acrylic. Price-wise, I think acrylic will be a couple more cents, if not the same. It all really depends on how much time and effort you want to put into the bending aspect of it. The overall product, honestly, I think looks better with acrylic. I had PETG before and I saw that it was getting a little foggy and I think that's one of the reasons or maybe I just had some bacteria there, not sure. But I went with acrylic and I don't regret it. And also, I just want to point out that if throughout this whole video, you have any comments, questions or concerns, please put it in the comments down below or shoot me a message on Instagram and I will make sure to answer those questions if you are still confused. So now some of you might be wondering, how do we even test the loop, right? How, how what is testing the loop? So basically what we want to do is we want to just run water through all the components and make sure that there's no leakage, but we don't want there to be power in the motherboard or any of our other components, because if there is power supply to those components and water gets spilled on it, it will cause an electric malfunction to say the least. So we have this little thing that we basically connect to the motherboard cable coming from the power supply and all it does is just 
trick the power supply, making it think that it's connected to a motherboard so that when we flick the switch of the power supply, it will provide power to any of the cables that are attached to the power supply. So what we do is we have just the motherboard cable connected to the power supply and the SATA connectors that we will use to power up the pump. So now whenever we flick the switch, the pump will start activating it and it will cause all of our water from our reservoir to start getting pumped into all of our components. And that is how we will make sure that everything is working. And there is actually an easier way to do this. There's a EK loop tester, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get my hands on it. And basically all it does is just pump air into the loop. And if it loses a bit of air, throughout the process it's okay it's safer as you know if there is a leakage you can notice it without there being a spillage so once that is all and done you get to the fun and scary part the filling as you can see i had to flush out that red color from the gpu so it was overall okay that i didn't get the ek loop tester and i was able to get all of that red color cycled and now up to this point, everything seemed well. There was no leakage. That was the biggest concern. That's honestly the biggest concern. But unfortunately, I did realize that I had my loop set up wrong on the GPU. And so I had to basically turn it back. The manual on the GPU active backplate wasn't so clear on this. So I wasn't sure and I just decided to test it anyways. But you cannot change the openings on the active backplate use the ones that come pre-installed because that will allow for the best flow. So unfortunately, I had already installed all the water, but fortunately enough, and this is why you should install a drain, is that you can easily drain all that reservoir water out. And I was also able to get really lucky. And in order for all the other water to come out, I just slightly turned the CPU T fitting and it allowed air to get into the loop and push everything to the reservoir again, which made the disassembling the loop 1 million times easier. So if this happens to you and you cannot loosen the fitting to allow air to go in, my solution is to have a bunch of paper towels or cloths underneath the fittings you are going to loosen up. Water will not come out as rough as you think it will as you have already released most of the water from the reservoir, but those cloths will just ensure that none of your components get wet. So once I disassembled it, I went ahead and ran the loop again and finally it was good. And now one thing to keep in mind is that the water that you use is actually sterilized water. So before putting in the final liquid that you actually want to have on your PC, make sure to run the loop with sterilized water, run it for like a good 30 minutes, rinse it out, put some more sterilized water and keep doing that process for around, I would say three times just to be safe. Basically what you're doing is just cleaning up your whole loop because if you end up washing it with just regular water like in my case i actually when i did the cuts and i was testing i was just rinsing out the tubes with regular tap water and if i were to just leave it like that it would cause living organisms to spread themselves all over my loop and they would just get really nasty so what i did in order to just avoid that is just run the loop with sterilized water rinse it out and do that for around three times to make sure i got all the nasty stuff out obviously you can't detect it but just make sure to do it like two three times to be safe so for the final liquid i went for the ek mystic fog and i absolutely love it i've been wanting to do a solid color for a while and it's just awesome it makes that rgb pop up and it allows you to have more flexibility on what rgb colors you can use unlike if you just had a solid primary color you know like before i had red there weren't that many options i could use for my rgb like i was stuck with basically white red and whatever other color i could combine but now I can do whatever I want and it just makes that EK mystic fog just pop up and I love it. So there it is guys. I hope I addressed most of the concerns I had when I did my first loop and like I said, please comment down below of any concerns you have or shoot me a DM on IG. I will make sure to reply and help you out. And also you can post anything on the water cooling subreddit. It is a phenomenal community and you'd be surprised at what kind of help you get from there. So also if for whatever reason I don't reply, post it there and see what they say. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to see more content like this. It will really help me out in my YouTube career. Anyways, Tech with Ray out. Peace.